Okay. Uh, for the purpose of the recording, we are going to finish up permissions with ACLs, and then on the 29th, we will have midterm. On the 22nd, we will do the review. If we're in the group that's the virtual machine one, do we need to get out of that? No, it's staying virtual machine one. That means everything is executed, but the sticky is on. If there's a small S, they're both on. If there's a big S, the executable is on, but the sticky is on. And if there's just a dash, everything is off. Okay. There's nothing there. And I think when it happens to deal with the last one, it turns into a T. I just want to pause this a minute to give people time to move. Uh, I believe. I'm going to explain what the U mask is. So I'm going into sign in as root. And I'm going to set, I'm going to look at my UMass currently. And do you remember when we had change mod, then we could put in four numbers? What does that first number change? The special bits. Special bits. And that one was? User group and other. So basically, if it was special bits, if I put a seven here, I would turn on a set group ID, set user ID, and, I mean, excuse me, set user ID, set group ID, and the sticky bit. What if I put a six here? What would I turn on? The first. Which would be? Right, 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 right. And uh, five and five, what would that be? Read, execute. Read, execute, read, execute. So that's what these bits also correspond to, but it's kind of in reverse. Special bits, user bits, um, group bits, and others. So I'm going to set it to all blank. 
So my UMask is completely turned off. If I re reboot this machine, it'll go back. So I'm going to touch um, test file 10.txt. Sorry. Uh, I did this command, then this command. What are the default permissions for this file? So basically, it is completely open. Everyone can write to that file. Everyone can delete that file. Everyone can read that file. Mm -hmm. What if I created a make der? Um, what am I saying by doing that? In my home directory, correct. I'm creating a directory inside my current my home directory, regardless of where I'm at. What are the permissions for that? Rewrite, execute, rewrite, execute, rewrite, execute. So what the UMass does is it masks off bits when you create a new file or folder. So if I put the UMass back at UMask is zero, zero, two, two, meaning keep this bit off. I'm masking off that bit. But the default permission turns it on. Read, write, read, write, read, write. If it's a file, read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. If it is a um, directory. So now when I create a test file 11, I can see that I've turned, that the right bit is no longer turned on. So, so kind of think of you mask as like masking tape when you paint. If you put masking tape over something, then paint, that bit, and you pull the masking tape off, that bit, uh, that part won't be painted. So that's essentially what I'm doing is turning off those two bits. This is set automatically in Etsy profile, in this file, which is massive. Cat Etsy profile. Um, if you want to modify it and not have the default, I'm going to grep for you, mask. Uh, guys, it sets it twice. There's two settings for UMask. If you sign in as a uh, regular user, 
that should be UMass. If we sign in as Ruth, that's going to be UMass. What, what I'm not showing you here is some if statement saying if your user account is, is this, is less than this, use this UMass. If it's greater than that, use this. So if, if your root or service account, you know, if your user account is less than 100, then that will be your UMass. Everyone else will use that. Um, but if you want to manually change your UMass, I, I would suggest doing it in this directory. It's not something you really want to, um, you don't want to mess with that Etsy profile. The Etsy profile has gotten so large that they don't want you to mess with it. If you want to modify it, they su suggest you create a script and drop it in this directory and it will get executed. Guys, how can I tell how many lines there are in Etsy profile? Word count. If you remember from this is one of those those first week commands that we learned. Yeah. Etsy profile. Yeah, 85 lines. I mean that's a big script. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's really a lot of times incomprehensible for even um, advanced users. Oh, right there's our UMass, incidentally. If it's greater than 199, meaning it's not a service account, this will be your UMask. If it otherwise, this will be your UMask. What's that by? Uh, Wait, backwards. Yes. <laughs> okay, look, do you ever, what's that, does anyone know what this <coughs> statement is? It's like a multiple ifs. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's kind of like a, a case statement and you know the case statement has ended when you type escape case backwards. Same way with an if statement. If you have an if statement, they know the if statement is done when you type it backwards. Oh, uh, instead of closing it like in yeah. a programming language? Yeah. Okay, so th that's, that's uh, what if I, uh, if I means. Okay, so guys, that's the default you mask. Just be aware of what it does. Most of the time, no one ever changes it, but, but it is part of the curriculum, so I just wanted you to be aware of it. The next thing we're gonna do is ACLs. When I talk, we were talking about all the bits except for this last bit, that's either a dot or a plus, and that stands for ACLs. Access control list. Access and basically, it's kind of like Windows permissions. So right now, I have a dot. That means I have no access control list. Um, I'm going to create a group. You can do the same thing. Um, what's the command to create a group? Group add group one. Group add group two. Uh, <coughs> uh, I don't think I could do that with group add. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna try. If you do, with semicolons, you could have done this. Group three, group add, group four. Like that, yes, but you have to type group add twice. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Semicolon just means two commands on one line. Right. No. Um, so I'm going to do user add uh, user one just to not uh, have any uh, conflicts with the current account you created. So I created two groups, two users, all the fault settings.
Okay, so get file ACL. I'm going to do it test file 10.txt. Or test file 11. right now is <coughs> these hash marks indicate it's just information. The file name, the user owner, the group owner, the user account, uh, the user owner permissions, the group owner permissions, and other permissions. So I can uh, set file ACL, set file ACL, and for modify, guys, I want to look at something real quick. Uh, a lowercase m. Takes will allow you to take permissions ACLs from one file and copy them over to another. Um, the book says you can use a lowercase m or an uppercase m. Uppercase m, so the book is wrong. Um, lowercase m modifies the permissions, uppercase m copies them from one file and sets them on a new file. I just noticed that a few minutes ago and I was like, well, that can't be right. Um, so I'm going to do set file ACL modify um, guys, I, I just want to look at something because it's, it's this is not something I, I do all the time. User User one, rewrite and test file eleven dot txt. The first, I can never remember what comes first. The first column is going to be U or G. U for user, G for group. Because remember, I can have a user uh, name and a group name match. So you have to specify whether it's a user or group. So for user one, I'm going to give them rewrite permissions for test file 11. Run get um, file ACL to look at the permissions now. Nothing in that second column, that's the group owner permission. It shows you the U mask now. If there's no permission set, it doesn't show you the U mask, but now it'll show you the U mask. So the default U mask is read write. Um, just for the the user and other permissions is read. Let's do it for a group. Set 
file ACL modify group. Let's call it group one. We'll give them read write execution for test file 11. I add an extra, sorry. If I do a list long, I'm, I'm going to give people a minute to type. It does no, it not the default U mask. It um, I, I I don't know honestly. I don't know. What's a invalid argument near character three? Do you have a space here? Yes. Let me come back a little bit. So the third character for you, you, you had a, after the command, you had a blank, a dash, an M. So it's saying that's the third character. You're saying the argument for that was wrong. The argument for that switch was wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about that. Um, Okay, it's saying it's the 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 U mask. I just looked it up. It's saying it's for in this case the user account. It's showing you what's not that nothing is masked off. Right now, if we look at we it should be on the example I was looking at, it was showing you two sets. If you set a user, it should show the user permission, but it's not showing. Uh, the user you mask or the group you mask right now it's only showing the user I'm not sure why it's not showing the group um, is it only showing the group because the group has all of them the user doesn't have access well when you set them it should show the you mask for that that particular user group or other and it's not showing it at all it's only showing you um, the user Oh no, maybe it's because, uh, maybe this is, it might be different. Maybe they're showing it under the group because it applies to the group. Yeah, because it shows all three. If it was applying to the user. So why, why doesn't it show any user, why does it show UMass under this? I, I know, it's different from what I'm looking at on an ex ex 
a stack exchange. Um, it's saying this should be the effective permissions plus the ACL mask. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Okay, so. Recent ACL mask? Because the most recent one was the one for Yeah, I, I don't know. We're, we're, we're not going to. Yeah. So I'm just going to add another uh, user permission to see if that changed. I'm going to, for user, user2, I'm going to give read, write, execute, and see if that changes. Read, write permission. No, it doesn't change. So I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so guys, we can just give any number of users permissions that we want, any number of group permissions that we want. Um, if we want, we could remove a permission. Get, sorry, set file ACL minus X user, user one, I'm just going to remove everything. No, I, I, I either can use the entire, I can delete the entire entry or delete nothing. You don't specify the permissions, just delete it. Okay. So get file ACL test file. So X deletes it, M sets it. Yeah, it's going all together. Want me to come back there? I mean, this is just a sample, so if you don't have them exactly as me, it's not going to be detrimental. If I do set FACL B test file 11.txt, get file ACL. The way I like to remember this is blank. So what does B do? It clears it. Clears it, yeah. It blanks out the permissions. If I do it on the directory, I have additional stuff. So guys, I have a directory called Testo. So I'm going to enjoy the Oh, that's going to sound good, YouTube. Um, so currently, I have no ACL set. So I'm going to do set uh, file ACL modify group 
group one, I'm going to give them read write, read execute permission for tester. Well, no, that's not two ways. One, the first one I did it for a file, now I'm doing it for a directory. With the directory, there are some additional things we can do here. I'm going to start with giving you one example for doing it through a directory. So now I'm going to create a file in that directory. No, I'm just saying that this is using uh, Rx instead of numbers or binary. Uh, oh, yes. We don't have the ability to use octal with set file ACL, you have to use alpha. Okay, cool. So I'm going to touch, touch uh, tester uh, another file dot txt. Get file ACL tester another file. Right now, does the, the permissions on the directory, if they're set, does it affect the file? No. So right now, if you set something on a directory, it will not inherit it to the file. If I do recursive, if I, when I set it, if I do a recursive, it'll force it down. I'm going to do set file ACL dash M for modify D for default G for group group one read execute for test der default For permissions. Basically meaning from this point on inherit the permissions. So when you create a new file or new folder inside of tester, they're going to automatically have group one add, automatically give group one permission. Right. So that basically means this will be part of the default permission from this point on. So I'm going to do Touch test there another file one dot txt this long tester not this long sorry get So now test another file automatically has group one. So it's really mimicking what Windows, if you use the D, it really will mimic what Windows do, what Windows does. Basically, 
Uh, when I set the permission on the parent folder, I set it as a default. So from that point on, any files or folders inside of that will have those permissions. Okay, guys, let's, let's, um, let's do our first break and then we'll come back. I, I want to look about that mass thing because it's going to annoy me now. Um, Uh, here's a good explanation. The ACL uh, mass defines the maximum effective permissions for any entry, for any one entry. The, the mass is calculated every time you you set FL, set FACL, or change mod commands. So it takes the, the maximum effective permissions. You mean it would group had them all, it would show the, all the permissions. Right. If one has re, if the if if one has the most permissions is rewrite, it'll show you the rewrite. Right. Okay. We have a, is this a Duncan run or is this yeah. a okay. First one ten minutes. Okay, look. This book, guys, is free too. Linux Training BE, there's a free book uh, anyone can download. And it, it's, it's um, there's several books and they're updated all the time. So can we do the same thing with the change mod command? But remember, change mod, you can do just the user owner, just the group owner, and everyone else. With the file ACLs, I can pick 10 different individuals, 10 different groups. That's the difference. Oh. You know, to be able to give multiple users and multiple groups at the same time. So, yeah, I see. So it's like limited, the change part is limited to what it can do. Right, just for the default Unix permissions that we've had since the 60s. Oh, man. Without permissions, don't exist.
capital to pass the quick or they have that though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Capital? They don't have to pay for it. No. Well, I mean, if you go in there, you like try to get get the missing yeah, how big was?
I'm still missing a couple people. something before I go. We're going to start talking about processes now, like task management, equivalent of task management. Linux is the back of the engineer version of uh, Linux. The Linux community has then continued and developed Linux. Well, does anyone remember uh, Bell Telephones? Or is anyone old enough to even remember Bell Telephones? Yep. Uh, Bell Telephones was broken up and became AT&T and Southern Bell. And, um, when they did that, AT&T had to look around and find out what, what its assets were. They developed an operating system called Unix for the purpose of training people. Um, and when people, and they gave it to colleges, when people got out of colleges, they continued to use Unix because that's what they used in school to learn about operating systems. Um, well, while they gave it to colleges before the breakup, uh, it was free to, you know, they had a BSD license. Uh, they had a, um, a free Unix license that they could use. Well, from that point on, when they got broken up, it was actually owned, and several companies owned it, and there's actually an argument going on right now who owns the Unix kernel license. But, um, so people started using the old license and continuing the development of that. So, there, you'll find an operating system called BSD, which is, looks exactly like Unix, but it's really running Unix. So what they take a lot, they take a lot of Unix, Linux tools, and backport it into BSD or free BSD. It's basically using the original license that um, uh, AT&T released the Unix with. So initially, the next command I'm going to show you is an old Unix command. So they have things. Like, this is different than this. Uh, because this is POSIX and this is UNIX. We're using the, the, the POSIX uh, thing. So be aware that the uh, X, I mean the dash, makes a difference. So if the username does not exist, this PS may be interpreted the command as PSAUX instead, uh, instead in printing warning. Uh, so basically, this is going to print all processes owned by the username as X. If X doesn't exist, so if you run this command, it'll print all, user, uh, uh, all processes owned by a, a username. Um, so if you don't put a username, it uses your own user account. If there's no processes for that account, it's going to be interpreted like this. The way I, I like to do it is, if you're using the A, don't use the dash. But you can do the same, a lot of the same commands by using E with the dash. So this is kind of the BSD style is without the POSIX system, UNIX system, the BST style. So you'll see that we use the dash all the time in Linux. UNIX, they don't really use the dash. So you could get different results depending on what you're doing. If you have a script that's looking through your processes and stuff, you need to be aware that there's a difference between the E and the, uh, I mean, the dash and the no dash. So I try to stick to this. 
If I use the E, if I want to use a dash, I use E. If I don't want to use a dash, I use A. So I'm just going to stick to what the book is doing, and they're using the BS, BSD, BSD style. So PSAUX will show them all my processes. Guys, in my real life, I do AEF to get the same thing. Just a different order. So, PSAUX. Let me move this back over here. It shows you all the processes. Guys, I'm going to do... You write less for the pages? Uh... Yes, I'm just going to look at the, the first few lines so I can see the header. Head. I'm just piping it over the head to see the first. The title. I'm just going to go over the top ones. The user who's running that process. Process ID. How much of the uh, CPU is it using, percent-wise? How much of the memory is it using? When it started? How long it's been running? And the actual command that, that's running. If something's happening on my system, I could get similar results by doing ps-ef. PF this or AUX. What is EF? Is, there, is that a like, short for something to do process? All the processes for a particular user. Or uh, or all users. Okay, yeah. Look, it man, it is it is a massive command. It's not well, like we're we're used to. E is one thing, F is another thing. No, it's their combination of characters. So I could do E, E F, E uppercase F, E L F. Um, I don't know where I got this from, but I always use E A F. I was just trying to think of a way to, so I can think of it as an acronym so I can learn it or remember it easier. But if Listen, no way to remember it. Uh, here's 90% here's of the time. If you're on Linux guy, you run this. If you're a Unix guy, you run this. Nine times out of ten, well, no, uh, probably 999 times out of 1,000, you want to see everything. Okay, not just one thing. And how do you, as long as you're looking at processes, can you stop a process? Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to get okay. there. Okay, so let's say you have a, something that's ongoing and you don't know what's going on and you're trying to investigate. So I can use a command called top. Now, be careful with the top command because when you use top, it's running a process and it could... Um, It could have an effect on your system because it's going to be using some CPU time as well. I'm going to. Uh, using resources, much. Yeah, it's using resources. I'm going to hit Q for quit. I'm going to type PS tree. PS what? Tree? PS tree. Now look. I'm going to go all the way to the top. Guys, you know we're using, with Red Hat 7 and 8, and, and later we're using System 5. Before that, we, we used uh, the predecessor of System 5. So in the old version of Linux, the first process was called init, I-N-I-T. Everything was spawned from that process. System 5 and later, everything was processed. The first process that is loaded by the kernel is called System B. 
So one process will spawn another process. So if I go down I, I can't see any, but but let's just say using uh, this as an example. So the parent process of this is system D. This process spawned two other processes. And I want to point out what that is. So I'm going to hit Q. And I'm going to go to top now. So if I have... So what happens if... What do you think would happen if I killed the parent process? It would kill all the sub-processes. Hopefully. What if something's stuck in memory? That's called a zombie. So if you killed the parent process and the child process just kind of hangs there in memory, that's called a zombie. So be aware if you want to, if you kill a parent process, it should kill all of the child processes. How do you kill the zombie? I'll, I'll show you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do sleep 1000. I'll explain what this is. Uh, 10,000. So something long. That just put something in the background. That just run something in the background. P-S-A-U-X. I can see it right there. I did sleep, 10,000, ampersand side. What is the process ID? 4388. For you, it, it could be different. Uh, so I'm going to do top to look at it there. It's using essentially no CPU. It's, it's so far down on the list. But how many processes do I have sleeping? Two. Yeah. I want a Q to get out. Q to quit. PSAUX. I can kill 4414. Don't you kill your number. Don't kill <laughs> my number. What? Okay, yeah, guys. Um, yeah, people ask how do I kill a zombie? Four, five, I kill a zombie. Uh, the number so the stopper process, I'm saying kill the process number. I'm not stopping the process. I'm telling the process to stop. There's a difference. So I'm going to have that process turn itself off. I'm not going to crash the process. I'm basically saying you shut down how you normally would shut down nicely. And then, it should be on the and then that process is gone. But what happens if the process won't, won't die? So I'm, I'm going to restart it. I can do kill dash nine and then the process now. What is the I'm going to kill it myself. I'm going to remove it from the kernel. Out of memory. So I'm, I'm just, that, I'm essentially crashing that program. So kill alone will ask the program to shut itself down nicely. Kill dash nine will uh, tell it to, will just crash the, the process. <clears throat> you mean you always kill uh, dash nine? Always do that force it? Uh, yes. Kill help. Yeah, when you use the dash nine, it goes from being terminated to kill. What? Um. Let me let me try a different man page. This is man what? Let, let me do man kill. Man. 
and eight kill. Another uh, guys, you gotta trust me. Nine means uh, don't don't uh, kill it nicely. Look at this. Sleep one thousand. Sleep one thousand. So I'm doing that three times. P S A U X. So I have three. Actually, I have four, but let's say I want to kill all those at the same time. Nicely, I can do kill all sleep. Uh, with kill all, you use the program name that you're launching, that you're trying to kill, not the process number. I could do kill all dash nine and crash them. So if you want to use the name, even if it's only one process you want to kill, if you want to use the name, use the kill all command. If you want to use the number, use kill. What's the difference between kill and terminate? Uh, kill alone without the dash nine is uh, is terminate, meaning the program terminated normal. Kill with the dash nine is kill. Oh, right. I think they crashed it, right? <coughs> you essentially crashed it. So if you had any open files, they may be hanging, still open and things like that. So you need to be careful with the dash nine. Uh, the other thing is a lot of times people crash it, they kill it, it doesn't stop, and then they do the dash nine immediately. Well, if you killed it, give the application a couple seconds to shut itself down properly. Um, but there are scenarios where something's just stuck, and you can't um, uh, you can't unstick it. And then it's a zombie. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's a zombie. What's a, what's the difference between a zombie? You killed the parent process, but the child process didn't oh, get killed. Yeah. So a zombie is the child process that's running. And what are we saying here? Uh, it, no, well, we could be killing a parent or we could be killing a child. We're just showing you how to terminate a process, whether it's a child or a parent. Oh, so that's what's going to work down. Terminate and kill another one. Let's do this. Sleep. 10,000% time. Ampersand, sorry. Ampersand sign. Jobs. So right now, that ampersand means put it in background. If I didn't put it in background, what would happen to my term? Yeah, It's not going to do anything until that sleep is done. So this ties up my terminal. If I throw it in the background, it'll, it'll keep that process running in the background. I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to show you another example. So I'm going to go into G-Edit, a graphic program. What happens to my terminal? Like a yeah, it's 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 like a, a, a notepad, but it's it's a, it's like a notepad on crack. Mm -hmm. in, in the sense that if you open a C plus plus file, it's going to do syntax highlighting and things like that. It does a lot more than just like Python, like notepad plus plus. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it could do Python too. Um, and there's a lot of websites. Um, there's all kind of things you can do with it. So, so it, it, it's it's a nice uh, program. So, but if I do G edit, run it in background, 
I can still use gedit, but it frees up my terminal. You notice I, have, I still have my terminal now. Uh, yeah, it's, but, but now my terminal's free, as opposed to here where my terminal, if I wanted to kill, how do I get the process for gedit? Yes, A U X. Grep for G edit. Awk, the field delimiter is space. I, I don't even need to put the space there, but it'll, it'll automatically assume space. Print. Dollar sign one, dollar sign two. A UK, sorry. You know, that would just show me the process numbers. What what is this doing? On your term or processes, Loki's filtering out to forget it, yeah. and that is filtering to the second uh, column. Right, I'm only looking at the second column. But do I have two processes with G added in it? No. Well, yeah. yes, yes, because you're right it twice. But no, the second process is grep. Uh, Looking for it. With G, uh, uh, GN. What is the little weird dude that you put in your garden with the pointy hat? No, just no. What is uh, the graphic user interface in a Linux environment? No. Good no. The same G. Because Richard Stallman, uh, GNU, not Unix. Um, GNU is Richard Stallman's company. There's an animal called GNU. You know, it's like a wildebeest or something like that. And it's a play on words. Uh, this stands for GNU not Unix. So the, the name in, includes the acronym. I don't know what, what he was thinking. Uh, he's an angry individual. Um, <laughs> so anytime they come up with a program like all the base Linux programs that we use and has a G in front of it, you pronounce a G. <laughs> okay, that's just the way Linux is. So you don't say GNOME is the guard GNOME. GNOME is the graphic user interface. We call this G -X. Um so basically, I'm filtering out that. But I'm also, it's also showing me uh, my grep line as well. So I can grep, reverse. I don't want to see any lines with grep. Uh, why didn't that work? Um, Let me get rid of this and just see what I'm what I'm doing. Grep as the grep. Oh, that that, that worked. Uh, then arc uh, I'll explain this and give me let me finish typing and then I'll explain it. Statement. Right, like I don't want to see that in my process. When I ran this, 
Not only did it show me the line with G in it, it also showed me my line with graph searching for G in it. So this, the dash V means show me lines that don't include that. So I don't want to see my graph line in the results. So what if I, after I ran it and he ran it, that after you ran it, we it doesn't show the process anymore? Well, is it still running in the background or did you close it out? Uh, the last command before that I ran was the, the grep for the auth print and then grep uh, type the grep before that. Okay, guys, and what will this do? In closing it in a dollar symbol. Okay. In, in brackets. It's going to be a double execution. Execute this first. It's going to return a number. Then execute the other command, kill that number. So that will kill that process. Are there spaces? Are you doing the straight up and down slash and then grab? Are you putting a space there? I'm putting this space there just for readability. But look, that character is called um, a pipe. It's the money symbol. Um, a, just a dollar sign. Yeah. What is it doing there? If it's uh, a dollar sign and then a word, it becomes a variable. But if it's a dollar sign with brackets, uh, but this is, it basically means execute that first, uh, take the results, and replace that whole thing with the results. So this would be like as if I type kill four, six, seven, nine. So well, you're, uh, you're, you're not have any results. Are you, like a backwards pipe? Uh, it's not really a backwards pipe, it's, it's a double execution. Uh, execute this first. The, then, when you get the results, kill that number. The right, so it executes this first, and once that's done, it executes this with the results of that. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not getting it, guys, <coughs> type jobs and verify that you have GEDIT running. Uh, okay, type GEDIT and put it in background. So it's there. Okay. I closed my little notepad. Yeah, so did I. Okay, when you close your notepad, it's going to, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be in background. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, so if I run in the background and I do kill dash nine in that number, it shows it being killed. Guys, you, instead of doing this, you can just do ps dash aux. And just see, get the number manually and that kills in that number. Put in the background. Meaning it's in the background of this bash shell. It's not really in the background as in visibility, it just means in this shell, frees up my shell to run additional commands. Now look, PS, AUX, no, I'm going to do PS tree. I'm going to try to find this process. Okay, I'm just going to do it with the regular PS. Uh, who's the parent process? Let, let me do this. PS dash AEF. I'm going to do my, my way. 
AF, let, let me just show you the head. UUID is the user ID. PID is the process ID. What is PPID? Parent process. So what's the parent process for G edit? I'm going to grep for 3086. What is that? That is the parent file or the parent process. Right. So this is my bash. I'm running bash right now. From this bash, I spawn GF. Okay. So what would happen if I killed this? It, should kill it would also kill all of these. Hopefully. If it doesn't, it does on me. I can tell you everyone's getting real quiet. I'm losing everyone. Um, let's, let's try to go back. I think, guys, this, I think I, I confused you with this. Okay. So, guys, I have jobs running in the background, right? If I do four foreground one, it brings that application to the foreground again. Then I can do whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to hit Control C to cancel it. So if you have a background process, you can bring it to the foreground by typing foreground one. So I'm going to type jobs again. Just because I moved, deleted, uh, just because I stopped job one doesn't make this become job one. It's still job two. So then my next process is still running, job two. Um, you really should put the percent sign in front. So foreground percent sign 2 is the best way to, to, to do it. But if you don't put the percent sign like I don't, it'll work. So now I brought that process to the foreground. If I hit cancel it, I have no jobs in the, in the background. I just want to see what I'm missing in this chapter. Okay, let, let me do this. Um, sleep 1,000, uh, 10,000 ampersand. PS dash AEF. Um, AUX. I'm just trying to see something if um, I'm going to pull something up on the book to show you. Okay, guys, do you see this column right here? Uh, AUX. And that's the status of that process. If it's a running process, it's an R. If it is a S, it's sleeping. But it's interruptible. 
meaning if I say kill, or if I if I go to it, I can pause the act. We do things to it. If it's not interruptible, interruptible, and I do a kill, send in a kill without a dash nine, it will not accept that signal. I would have to do the dash nine to kill that process. So if I see something with the D, I only have one choice. And I kill with the dash nine. Uh, R is uh, excuse me, K is a killable task. Uh, I is it's idle. T is if it's stopped. So all those things have a certain meaning. Guys, you're not going to remember them if I went through everything in the list. But most of the common ones that you're dealing with is R, S. R is running, S is sleeping. So when I sent it to back, when I sent um, sleep to background, what happened? Well, it's yeah, it, it's suspended. Okay, so I can do jobs and can see that job number, and I can do background percent sign one. It's already sleeping, but I can make a job kind of go into a sleep state with the background command. It's already there, but it'll move it to a, a, an S state. So if I have something running, I can move it to an S state with the background command. I've never had to do that, but if you have some big job running, like you're, you're calculating something from a database, doing a database query, it's using too much CPU, you can go into uh, that job and suspend it for a little bit so you can do something else. I'm sorry? If you suspend it, it just kills it, or is it just runs part of the application, but is it just paused? It's just kind of like paused. <coughs> you know, it, you're, you're not going It's. It's paused, it will still accept signals, meaning you can cancel, you can bring it to foreground, it's not going to be hanging in memory, but it's not going to be using resources. Well, it's just, it's just sitting there waiting for you to do something else with it. Um, yeah. It's not using CPU time, it's going to uh, go. Okay, guys, here's the things I can do with, I keep saying you can send it a signal. Here's what I can do with those signals. Um, uh, the signal numbers, we were dealing with nine, basically causing the program to crash. Um, you can, I, I've never had to do anything else like that, but other than nine. But you can, when we send it a, a kill, it's like sending it a three. If you don't use any number, you're like sending in it a three. You can interrupt it. You can hang, hang the process up. Um, I've never used anything but nine or nothing. But just be aware of those processes. Uh, they might need to come up in, in something, kill dash one or kill list will show you all the things that you can do. If you want to go and memorize all this, more power to you. This, this is the main one that you need. If something's hanging, you can't get rid of it. Right. A signal. Yeah, signal kill. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see if it's in that list. It's not. It's not in that list even. Does a plus after the status mean that that if I'm not mistaken, plus means it's running in the foreground? Is that what it means? Like up at the top for PS uh, AUX, it's R plus for the status. Does that mean it's running and then the plus means in the foreground? Uh, I, I don't know if it's in the foreground. 
I, I would have to go back and look at that. Give me one second. I, I can go back. I just want to make sure there's nothing in this chapter that I'm missing. It doesn't even show. You know, it, so I'm not sure what it means. Like I said, I never used a um, PS AUX. The reason I like to do this is PS dash AEF is so I can see that parent process. So I know what's bonded. But the eight parent error. Uh, I'm sorry? Go ahead. Are you saying when you use the AEF, you don't get the SL or the R or the status? Uh, correct. I don't get the flags. So you get, there's only a, I mean, if you, you can use AEF for majority of the time, but you need to find out the status. Yes. Certain process that you run. Most of the people uh, I, that I work with, a bunch of nice people in my day, they end up running this. AUX. AUX. I just, for whatever reason, in my, my what I've done with the Linux box, I've always needed to know the parent process, so I went with AEF. Uh, no, E E A F hyphen e e a f and only while we're on the subject so the status i see like sr but then some have like a capital s and lowercase s i'm assuming that the capital s and the lowercase s means two different things so how can it be sleeping and then selling something else uh, this is not giving me a full list of flags so i don't know okay i just didn't know if you yeah no um again i rarely if ever run aux um So, so it, it's just, guys, just think of a task manager. Uh, I, I never used PS3. I never used top. I just, it, if I'm looking at a process, like when you go into task manager, what do you do in task manager, most of you? End process. Let me get my mouse control back. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do in task manager. Uh, but we, we, what do you do? Most of the time, for look, Chrome because it's uh, running so many, <laughs> it's running so much. Yeah, but, but so you see, you see the parent process and the child process. You know, it's same concept. Um, bring to front, bring, you know, it's really the same process. So what do you need task manager for? You go in there for one thing, kill a process. That's what I use a PS for. Manage process. Yeah, yeah, just to kill it. You want to know PS that's yeah. what uh, What is it? Lower case? S is the interruptible sleep, the little S is the session leader, and the L is a multi-thread. Okay, and what is session leader? <laughs> Didn't you just say session leader? Uh, interrupt, yeah. Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, okay, look, um, here's another one. Uptime. How long has this system been running? Which one? <laughs> the machine I'm at. Listen, I was uh, the Unix admin here for a while. I set up a Sunbox years and years ago that was the Unix domain controller. And like eight years after I left the job, they go, do you know the password? <laughs> and I go, no, I don't remember it. He goes, because they haven't, they had, it was running for eight years and doing its job and no one had to, <laughs> to shut it down to, you know. So, so these, these boxes can run for a long time. So the session ID is equal to the process ID? Oh, oh okay. Uh, list CPU um, tells you about your CPU that you're using. Okay, and that's pretty much. Well, let's see what this is. Um, no, that's just a program.
Okay, guys, that's it for the, this chapter. Here's where we're at. I'm not going to do this for the test. There's no way I can see if you can do this. Unless I have you put a job in background. There's no way if I can see you canceled a job to even grade that. So we're going to be setting up user accounts, setting up group accounts, setting permissions. I'm going to have you customize the... The, the profile or the bash RC file. And so you're going to be using DI to do that. Um, you're going to be using a command line. You'll be creating files and things like that. So everything we're going to be covering is from all of this to chapter seven. <sighs> chapter one through seven. And on book two, Just chapter four, some of the stuff that we've done, well, like the grep and the pipes and things like that is, is here. But I'm not going to get into anything other than, uh, actually, I'm not even going to put file ACLs on the test. You won't, you won't have to deal with file ACLs, but just be aware that, that they're there. So everything on the test right now is going to be one through seven. Um, we'll do the review next time we meet. Any questions? I know today it was kind of chaotic because uh, we're coming to two different topics and one is just kind of a watch topic, but it is what it is.